Hey, I'm B. Jared Wolkert, and in this video I'm going to show you how to create a base color for your website using SAS and have all of your other colors based off of that. So if you change your original base color, all of the colors on your site update automatically. Um, we're going to be looking at the RGB to HSL SAS color matcher that I made on CodePen a few years ago. This is how this thing works. You set a base color for your site, and I set it in HSL because you can just change the hue and then it will update all colors um, more easily so you can change from a blue to a green or to a red to see what that kind of a, a theme on your site would look like um, and then you have an input value so let's say that you've been toying around with the colors for your site in Photoshop and you've got um, a specific box somewhere that is this color and you wanted to um, change this from this hex value in your SAS to something like this where it has your base color and you were adjusting its hue, saturation, and um, and brightness uh, to reproduce the same hex value, roughly. So this is uh, what this thing does. So I've got my base color up here. This is the base color for the entire site. Um, down here, I've got my input, the color I'm trying to reproduce with SAS, and I've got my output. So there's the input, and there's the output. And they're next to each other, so you can compare them and make sure that they both um, look right when you adjust things. Uh, I've got some JavaScript down here that's doing a whole bunch of math stuff, and what that's doing is it's converting these hex values that you put in here to HSL, so I can uh, try to reproduce it. So I can see right now the hue is the same, 228 for both of them, so that's good, but this one is a little bit uh, more desaturated than that one. If this was a higher number, then I'd have to change this from desaturate to saturate. Oops to saturate like that. So if I put in 50 right here, this output will become much, much brighter. If I change that to D, it'll become much more uh, desaturated and gray. So we will just set that back to zero. And it was at 28 and 45. So I'm gonna subtract a couple numbers there. I'm gonna put seven in there. And I'm also going to change my behavior settings on here to so I can run it manually. And now we can see, okay, we've got the right number there, 38. So um, that makes sense. 45 minus 38 gives you 7. So that's what we put right here. Um, and then the next thing is uh, we'll do the brightness, I guess. So this is 43, so this needs to be a little bit brighter. So we have lighten. If this was lower than 37, then we need to change this to darken right here. Um, so let's bump that up, I don't know, five or so, run. And that's pretty close. Let's try six, run. And there we go, 38 and 43. Now you can look at these two colors next to each other and say, that's pretty darn close. You can see in the process of updating these other values, um, it's affected the hue slightly. So it changed the hue just a little bit from 228 to 227.7. And I can go in here, I can do like 0.1 maybe and hit run. And now eh, nothing really changed there. Maybe it's 0 0.1 run. And let's just try one run. Okay, and then one's way too big. Uh, dot two run. All right, so at this point, it becomes uh, an exercise in trying to massage this thing into place and see if you can get it to look right. Um, and I go from 0.1 to 0.2, and it's either going to be 227.71 or it's going to be 228.43. So you want to go a little under or a little over on the hue, and that's something that you'll just have to choose because um, these you're, you're wrapping your variable of this value in a function which processes the color and then another function which takes that process color and processes it again and then another function that takes that one so this guy right here this first one we can change its value but then it's going to get changed twice more so um, whatever is the innermost function in this value it's going to be the hardest to match against so um, it seems like doing it in this order of hue, saturation, and brightness, um, where hue's in the middle, and, I mean, hue's in the, the center of it, and then the brightness is on the outside part. That seems to be the 
easiest way to reproduce colors. Um, but that's the idea. So uh, should you do this for your entire site where you have one base color and then every other color on your site is based off of that base color? Uh, probably not. I did it once on a site and um, it was kind of annoying to set this up for every color. And at the end of the day, um, uh, it wasn't very useful. I mean, I did end up tweaking this value slightly and all colors updated based off of it. And that was nice, I guess. Um, but when I played around with it and put in um, colors like, I don't know, like a nice bright green and update it and this was green and then everything was based off it. Like this guy also turned to based off of that hue to that same green or I wanted it to be just a little bit um, more saturated and everything in the site updated instantly. And that was really cool and letting it do that. But unless you're doing um, some crazy theming stuff and you want to output a bunch of different CSS files for it, it's not that useful. This will probably be a lot more useful in CSS4 when we have actual uh, CSS variables built into the browsers and we could then um, update stuff like this in there. Um, that'd be cool. But for now, uh, that's the idea behind this and how you can um, replicate an input color um, with your just these three SAS functions. All right, so I hope that was helpful to you guys. Thanks for watching.